My son said, why talk about conflict resolution in a conference that talks about Jainism and uh, I mean, science and Jain philosophy? Because my, he knows my commitment to bringing out the parallels between Jainism and science. In fact, when I prepared a whole exhibition for Jaina, uh, the Jain contribution to science was an integral part of my exhibition. To anatomy and physiology, to atomic science, applied physics, mathematics, biology, psychology, cosmology. And still I'm going to talk about conflict resolution here uh, because conflict is fact of life, right? We all face conflicts on a daily basis. And my commitment is to take Jainism beyond the fixation on food and to various aspects into our day-to-day -day life. Everybody knows what anekantwa is. It is a theory of knowledge that can support dialogue and negotiation among people of diverse perspective and claims. It's a respect for the views of the other, thereby establishing the basis for reconciling conflicting ideological claims. So imagine having the skills to diffuse conflict as it occurs, right? What if you had ability to clearly communicate so that communicate with your friends and families, uh, to your coworkers, so that you develop a partnership? Otherwise, many a times in uh, communication, there is a lot of uh, disagreements and resentments. We'll skip some of this. Now, Gandhiji said that I do not want people to just tolerate each other. I want them to understand and respect each other. Understand and respect, right? Those two aspects. I feel that once you understand somebody, you are bound to respect them, right? Or maybe it's a, it's a, a circular paradox that unless you respect the other person, you cannot truly really understand them. Skip this, I'll jump straight to three-step process of resol resolving any conflict. So the first step is listening without judgment, right? Now, although we all think ourselves as open-minded and objective, in fact, our approach to others is often filtered. It's even obscured by our existing notion of right and wrong, existing notion and ideas, right? And they come from the way we grew up. So once we recognize those filters, then we have ability to pass beyond those filters and truly listen to people. And then we can understand them. Now I'll give, give you some examples if time permits at the later time. The second step is creating mutual understanding and respect, using an account path, of course. So respect here, we respect others not because of fear or because of pity or because of awe. We respect them because we acknowledge the validity of their viewpoint. Now here, uh, the second point here is win-win situation. Typically, we grew up in the environment that it's always win-lose, right? As we grow up, uh, grades in school, win-lose. Somebody gets A, somebody has to get C. Uh, sports, one team loses, the other team wins. Even our democracy is win-lose, right? One party wins, the other party loses. What if you learn the skills where in any situation, Every party walks away as a winner. And Anikant gives us that opportunity to be able to do that. Now, win-win is different from uh, compromise. Because when you compromise, you're giving up something. And that leads to resentment. Win-win, everybody uh, walks away with, as a winner. The third point I want to mention here is the abundance mentality versus scarcity mentality. Again, uh, we grew up in scarcity mentality, right? So that's 
Therefore, there is a lot of competition. Now, Chinese app tells us that there are 8.4 million life forms, uh, 84 Churyashi uh, Jiva Jodi, right? All of them are fed, they're sheltered, they're protected by nature. Human being is the only one that's not satisfied. They want more. They want to control. They want everything. And we call ourselves the intelligent one. Now, conflict begins with words. So respectful communication training as an important part, should be an important part of any educational system. Well, we have nonviolent communication technique developed by Marshall Rosenberg. Anybody has heard about Marshall Rosenberg's work? Great. The aim here is to resolve conflict without the use of guilt, humiliation, shame, blame, coercion, or threats. Now, there are four parts to this. Stating what you observe, right? Then, stating your feelings that your observation caused in you. Then, what your needs are. Express your needs. And lastly, make a request. Okay? I'm going to go a little bit in detail in this. So, when you state an observation, uh, it's without judgment. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, you have a birthday, your spouse forgot to bring you flowers, right? So you say, well, I noticed that you didn't bring me flowers on my birthday, right? So that's an observation versus you forgot my birthday again or you don't love me anymore. Those are all judgments. The second step here is expressing your feeling. So in this case, it would be, I feel hurt. Not that you hurt me or you make me mad. We get upset, right? And we always blame others that you make me mad. Only reason we get upset is there is anger in us. Period. There is no other reason. It's like when you squeeze lemon, what comes out? Lemon juice. Does it matter who squeezes it? It still comes out lemon juice. Does it matter how you squeeze it? By hand or machine, it's still, there's lemon juice. Same way, if somebody squeezes us, and if anger comes up, that means there's anger within us. It's not the other person. The third step here is then expressing your needs. Uh, so here, in this case, it could be that, well, I need to feel loved. I need uh, to feel respected. And then you make a request. Now, making a request here uh, should be very clear. Many a times he said, well, oh, you know what I want, right? Be specific. And don't tell me what you, don't tell the other person what you don't want. You clearly say what you want. So in this case, it would be something like, how about going out for dinner to celebrate my birthday? Now, when you make a request, make sure that the other person has opportunity to say no or come with counter-proposal. You should be I mean, open to that. So your spouse may say, well, I have this deadline to meet, so I can't go out for dinner today. But how about I take you out to Mahabharishwar this weekend to celebrate the birthday? Right? So there's a counter-proposal. So once you understand this way of communicating, can you imagine the difference it would make in your life? Right? So this is what uh, this conflict resolution method, this model, allows you to do. Uh, I think this is a great application of Anekatwa through which we can live a life of partnership and participation. It would be a life of friendliness and harmony. It touches almost every aspect of our lives, and thus it gives us opportunity to create a new uh, world. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have an announcement that uh, first we'll give the mementos to the speaker, and then we are going to have a very beautiful film on Wisdom Tree, which I want all of you to see. It's a wonderful film. So may I request? Uh, uh, may I request? Uh,
Dr. Tated to felicitate uh, our Puja Acharya Nandi Gosi Maharaj sir. Sir, please come and honor uh, Param Puja Nandi Gosi Maharaj sir. May I request uh, Sumerji Surana to come on the dais and felicitate uh, Dr. Robert. Sumerji Surana, please. Mr. S.K. Jain, please come on the dais and uh, request to felicitate Professor Vinay Jain. May I request uh, our distinguished guest, Santilalji Mutha from Pune, to come on the dais. <laughs> and felicitate Dr. Sudhir Shah. Santilalji? <laughs> I request uh, Justice Tate to give few words over here. Muniyore Gan, unko tikuthe ke paarse vanda na. Speakers on dais, sisters and brothers, those are here present. Today we have listened scientists, philosophers, and those who have worked in the Jainism with science. They explain us what is the fact. How we can use this science along with our dharma? We have heard Dr. Bipin Joshi, Mara Sahib, Dr. Sevin Shah, Professor Robert, Dr. Vinay Jain, Sudhir Shah. See, actually, they have shown us what is the bhakshak and abhakshak, as well as how we can use anikan vant in our day to day life. Because this, as a judge, I can't speak that much in what they have stated about the Jainism with science. But one thing I can tell, that in day-to-day -day life also we can use this. Because you can see that what is provided in Jainism, usually in day-to-day -day life, as is stated in the morning, you can do Pratikaman, that also along with the Jainism only. That This gives us exercise plus mental peace. Thereafter, it says that Naukarsi, that is also one of the fasting that way. It says that we have to use the boiled water in day-to-day -day life. That is also a scientific, it is provided that how it is helpful for us life. Thereafter, we can see that most things now the peoples are started following, not from Jainism, but other also, that is Chauhair. Now we can see that every, if you go to the doctors, they always say that you have to take whatever your dinner before at least four to five hours before your sleep. These, these small things if you can use in day-to-day -day life, that also say that we are following Jainism along with the science that gives us better. I am very happy that you have given me chance to attend this function and listen to these sound speakers. I am very thanks for that. So before we, before we conclude the session, uh, there are time is unlimited for time is limited for the questions. You can ask Nandigo Simbarasam afterwards. Uh, but let me conclude this session by saying us. Uh, by a small story about Anekantvad, uh, there was a husband and wife newly married were passing through the streets. Suddenly a barking dog came and uh, it was a newly married couple. So the husband holds the wife into his arms so that the barking dog doesn't bite the wife. Barking dog went away. After few seconds, Husband is so happy that he saved his wife from barking dog and he puts the wife down and he expects that wife would appreciate the act. Instead of that, wife slaps him. <laughs> the husband is, you know, husband is surprised. He says, what happened? The wife says that I've seen people throwing the stones and other things on the barking dogs. <laughs> so that is an account one. The wife can have a different perspective of what you say. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this is for Justice K.K. Thathe. Uh, and I'm thankful to IC, ICSJP to give us this opportunity. Was, what I was trying to say is we've been screening the film in the United States for more than a year. It's on science and spirituality. And the film has been received extremely well. 
and this is the first time we are introducing the film in India. Uh, we are going to show you a 10 minutes introduction to the film. Uh, and I'm thankful to ICSJP to give us that opportunity. Uh, you, you will, the film is produced in USA, San Francisco. Uh, and you will hear wonderful, a, 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 as we run some slides and then we'll run trailer, you will see wonderful rendition by renowned Indian classical singer Sweta Javeri Ji. Uh, I think uh, you'll appreciate music as well as what we are going to show you. It's just eight to 10 minutes. Thank you.